Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, is histrionic personality disorder dead? So this question, is histrionic personality disorder dead, may seem a bit dramatic, but actually there's quite a bit of evidence that this may be the case. A reference I'm using here to help answer this question is from the Oxford Handbook of Personality Disorders. And one of the chapters, chapter 28, that was written by Blashfield and colleagues, is actually titled, The Death of Histrionic Personality Disorder. So this is something that the research community has been looking at for quite some time. So first I'll take a look at the construct of histrionic personality disorder, then talk a little bit about its history, and we'll look at the factors that are leading to this discussion about the potential death of histrionic personality disorder. So with the diagnostic classification histrionic personality disorder, we see that there are eight symptom criteria in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the DSM. First, we have being uncomfortable if one's not the center of attention. Then we have being sexually seductive or provocative, having shallow or rapidly shifting emotions, using one's physical appearance to attract attention, having an impressionistic style of speech, so lacking detail in speech, being theatrical, suggestible, and having this assumption that relationships are more intimate than they really are. So histrionic personality disorder is a cluster B personality disorder in the dramatic emotional erratic cluster, along with antisocial, narcissistic, and borderline personality disorders. Now the construct of histrionic personality disorder started about 2,000 years ago. We see it in Greece and in Egypt, and it was called hysteria. And later on, hysterical personality or hysterical personality disorder, and now of course, histrionic personality or histrionic personality disorder. Originally, the term hysteria referred to a construct, of course, which we have disproved a long time ago. But this idea of hysteria was that the uterus breaks free in a woman and travels around and causes all these symptoms, like being excessively emotional and having somatic symptoms. So again, it's easy to see we know that's not true, but these are the origins of this term hysteria. Now, hysteria was fairly popular as a construct, again, in Greece and in Egypt. And in the 1800s, it was extremely popular in France as a construct. But it was really Freud that brought it into this modern era. We see that initially, he indicated that hysteria was always caused by sexual abuse. And then later on, he indicated that it was caused by a repression of sexual desire. And it's really this formulation of hysteria that moved on and led to hysterical personality and then histrionic personality. Freud's conceptualization of hysteria also really closely linked histrionic personality, what would become histrionic personality, to psychoanalytic theory. So we see that this disorder, more so than a lot of disorders we see in the DSM, has its roots in psychoanalytic theory. So now moving on to the factors that lead some to believe that histrionic personality disorder is dead. We see the definition of histrionic personality disorder, we see the history of hysteria and then hysterical personality and how that leads to histrionic personality disorder. But is the concept really dead? We see the histrionic personality disorder is listed in the SM-5 and many individuals believed that it would be dropped, that it would not be included in the SM-5. And this book chapter published in 2012 does allude to that belief that it would be dropped. Now we see though that even though it's in the DSM, that the alternative model in the DSM, section three, does not have histrionic personality disorder. It has antisocial, narcissistic, and borderline, the other three cluster B personality disorders, but not histrionic. So even though it was included in DSM-5, we do see some evidence there that this construct may be dead or at least dying. So I mentioned some of the factors already that lead to this idea that histrionic personality disorder could be dead, like the history, the history with hysteria, and the link to psychoanalytic theory, which of course is not as popular a theory now as it was several years ago. But there are other factors as well that have led to this concept of histrionic personality disorder not being clinically useful. One of these factors is that we really don't see it in the literature anymore. Now, just because something isn't studied doesn't mean, of course, that it isn't real. There are a lot of potential disorders that we don't know about yet, that we haven't studied. 
But if a construct exists and it's popular in the research, and then over time that popularity dissipates, that is an indication that researchers and clinicians are moving away from a particular classification. We see that with histrionic personality disorder, in 1975 it was the third most popular personality disorder in the research literature. From 2001 to 2004, we see that borderline personality disorder was featured, at least in some minor way, in almost 1,300 articles. In that same time period, histrionic was featured 44 times. From 1971 to 2005, borderline was the topic in 1,656 research articles and histrionic personality disorder was the topic in 44. Now again, the same number, 44, that was seen before, but it's a different definition. It was a article that was written about the disorder. We also see in that same time period, 1971 to 2005, that paranoid, schizoid, and dependent personality disorders were all the topic of less than 50 research articles. Interestingly, those are also not in the alternative model listed in DSM-5. So histrionic, paranoid, schizoid, and dependent personality disorder are not available in the alternative model. Another factor hurting this construct of histrionic personality disorder is the prevalence. It's estimated that in the general population, this disorder appears in less than 2% of individuals. And if we use a conservative definition of histrionic personality disorder, it's about 0.3%. If we compare that to borderline personality disorder, again using the conservative definition, Borderline is at about 2.7, and antisocial is about 3.8, so a large difference in prevalence between those disorders. We also see here with histrionic personality disorder, there just appears to be too much overlap with borderline personality disorder. There's a lot of confusion between borderline personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder. We also see with histrionic personality disorder, there's a lot of comorbidity with borderline personality disorder, of course, but also narcissistic personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder, and dependent personality disorder. So from a perspective of prevalence and comorbidity, and especially this relationship with borderline personality disorder, histrionic personality disorder appears to be in trouble. Histrionic traits do not appear to represent a separate dimension from a personality trait perspective, and of course we believe that personality disorders are generally moving in that direction, moving from categorical to dimensional, or at least we're going to see an addition of dimensional. We already see it to some degree with Section 3 of the DSM. We also know the decrease in popularity with histrionic personality disorder and the talk of potential deletion that occurred before DSM-5 did not seem to cause any type of uproar like we saw with other disorders that were discussed in terms of possible deletion. So again, there doesn't seem to be much research interest, much clinical interest, and a number of individuals are not upset about the status of histrionic personality disorder on the decline. Another factor with histrionic personality disorder is that it doesn't appear to be associated with a lot of distress when compared to a number of other mental disorders, even other personality disorders. We see distress associated with paranoid personality disorder, with narcissistic, antisocial, borderline, avoidant personality disorder, schizotypal, but to a lesser extent, we see it with histrionic personality disorder. A lot of times individuals with histrionic personality disorder actually do fairly well at work. They tend to end up in jobs that are more creatively oriented, but either way they don't have a lot of career distress. Now we see the same factor with obsessive compulsive personality disorder, not the relation to creative work styles or anything like that, but just career success in general. So obsessive compulsive personality disorder has not been disputed as a legitimate classification, at least not very much. So this alone doesn't mean that histrionic personality disorder is in trouble, but it's just one factor. Again, it's not associated with a lot of distress in comparison. So is histrionic personality disorder dead? Is this a diagnosis we should really no longer consider? Does it have clinical utility? Well, functionally speaking, yes. Histrionic personality disorder appears to be dead. The research interest, the clinical interest, is extremely low in comparison to other personality disorders. Technically speaking, however, histrionic personality disorder is not dead. It is a classification in the DSM and DSM-5, and we see it diagnosed, again, at a prevalence in the general population of just less than 2%. Of course, in practice, we see histrionic personality disorder. We know that these traits do tend to cluster together 
at least sometimes, in certain presentations. The question here isn't so much, does it exist, but is it a useful classification? And that's the debate that's going on right now, and we'll have to see what the future holds in terms of histrionic personality disorder. I hope you found this description of histrionic personality disorder and its potential usefulness as a classification to be interesting. Thanks for watching.